Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sallallahu Sayyidina Nabiina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ali. Al Masumin Siyama Hujata Ibn al Hassan Aja Allahu Ta'ala Farajahum Sharif. Sallallahu Alaihi Ka Ya Sayyidi. Ya Mahulaha, Ya Rasulillah. Sallallahu Alaika, Ya Sayyidi. Ya Mahulaha, Ya Abdullah. Ya Rahmatu Allahi. Waya Baba Najatil Uma Faleta Nakuna Wa Akum Sadati Fana Foo then Fow then Ahadi. Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi rajiun. Salawat. Can I please allow salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to hear me rant on the minbar for these glorious days. When we think of certain things, we always think of things that affect us the most. And one of the things that affect us the most is afflictions. Every time an affliction happens to us, it is almost like it's the end of the world to us. Imam Bakr alayhi salam said that afflictions are the key to rewards. We wonder how can an affliction be a reward or a key to a reward? Affliction is an affliction. Rewards are rewards as we see it. He's basically telling us that with everything that happens to us, there is a hidden benefit in it. We may not be able to see it, but there is. And that we should look at these things that way and not consider them as troublesome to ourselves as we normally do. There was one time a man was feeling sad and he was afflicted with pain and heartache. And he had went to Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam about this because this affliction that happened upon him was that he had lost his son. We know how hard that is. So he said to him that you worry about the minor affliction and not worry about the major one. The first thing he said, like, oh, Imam. That is major affliction. I lost my son. He said, if you had prepared yourself for the place in which he has returned to or has gone to, then you would not be worrying about this small affliction. He's saying that the affliction that is hard is the hereafter. That you should prepare yourself for that. And if you had to prepare yourself for that, you wouldn't be worrying about your son leaving because you know that he will be taken care of, inshallah. Now, we see this as very difficult for us. But as we look on the same type of situation, we see that the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, has said something similar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali. 
he says something similar to a person that he himself, he lost his child. And the man was very upset about losing his child. So the Rasulullah said to him, would you rather see him now or be with him now or be with him in the paradise? Of course, you know, we're going to say, oh, Rasulullah, we would like to be with him in the paradise. You know, nobody's going to say, well, I'd rather be with him now. Especially if the Rasulullah asks us this question, right? <laughs> I don't want to be with him there. He said, because of this your son will be at the gate of paradise asking for your entrance, for you to be able to enter. So we see that because of this affliction, if he holds tight upon his, on his rope and not go out of control and lose everything in which he believes in, this affliction will pass and there will be some type of reward in this. We never look at it like this, right? What happens when we go through afflictions? Sometimes we lose ourselves, not thinking about nothing but that affliction. We forget all about, say for instance, belief or what we believe in. One of the things that affects ourselves when we go through this is our iman, right? Our belief. This is why somebody asked Amir Mukminin, what is the worst affliction he said to lose faith? To lose Iman. How can, you, how can that be if you think about it? Faith is something that keeps someone strong when they go on through these type of things. If it's not for faith, we would not be able to cope with these afflictions. Without this Iman, it would be very difficult for us to go through this. We always said that Allah Zajala is going to help us and Allah Zajala is going to give us strength to be able to cope to go through this. We always said when we go through these afflictions that Allah Zajala will reward us for the heart, ache, and pain that we're going through. But if we do not have any faith, we will lose ourselves. And we would never look for that mercy or that hope in getting things straight within ourselves. Right? We didn't have Iman. No faith. Or Iman. Right? We will find ourselves falling victim of losing hope. Right? We was talking about that before. And one of the worst things is that a believer to lose hope. So when a person goes through affliction and he loses iman and he loses hope, then he is in deep trouble or she is in deep trouble. He and she is in deep trouble. So we have to stay focused and be able to hold on to that faith because if we lose that, we lose everything. We lose everything. It is almost like the iman is the, the faith is like a pillow that holds us up and makes us strong. This is like what it is almost. We see that when we go through these afflictions, we need to start thinking about others who go through far worse afflictions than we do. Our problem is that when we go through these things, we never look at the people who are worse off than we are. We just look at ourselves and say, oh, I'm going through heartache. I remember one time I saw a person, I was somewhere, right? We always complain, maybe, oh, our feet hurt. I'm going through hardship because of heartache affliction because my shoes may be too tight. Just saying, for instance. I went somewhere one time and this guy, he had no feet. All he had was stubs. And he was just the happiest person ever. He was smiling. He was laughing. He didn't think nothing of it. His affliction did not make him lose faith. But let one of us, that happen to us, it would be the end of the world. 
This is why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, when you go through affliction, for you to be able to have ease, think about my death, his death. And once you think about my death, your, what you think will go away. This is what Rasulullah said. He said, think about my death. Then it will go away. My affliction, me leaving, and it will go away. This is an example of thinking about others first and what they're going through before you think about yourself. Then you would be like, Alhamdulillah, it's not bad after all. My affliction is nothing at all compared to others. This is what we have said. We think about how when we go through these type of afflictions, how can we just be the same type of person? Because we are told that when we go through afflictions, not to reveal how we are or how we going or how we doing or the afflictions in which we happening. In other words, if we go through these afflictions, not to be like, oh, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, I'm going through this, I'm doing all of this, but to be easy and calm and cool and have patience while you're going through it. <laughs> not us. Oh no, we go through afflictions. We telling everybody, I'm gonna write to the newspaper, I'm gonna talk to the reporter, I'm gonna tell them, put this on the internet, tell everybody this affliction in which I'm going through because it is the most important thing in the whole world. But we are told not to say anything about it. Put our trust in Allah. And Allah is a jello, get us out of this. We have to trust in Allah. And have patience and preserve and, and persevere through these things. Because throughout cloudy days, there is sunshine on the other side. This is what we have to do. When we think about afflictions, we have to also think about the affliction in which Imam Hussein alayhi salam had went through. Just imagine us watching everybody that's in our close family die in the massacre or being killed one by one. To see how calm and cool the Imam was as this was going on. Because he knew that this hardship or affliction was nothing compared to what others went through. Then we look at, say for instance, this night of Ashura. And we look at the, the affliction in which the household of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had went through. Just put this in your mind right now. We see a desert. And in this desert, we see Ali, Akbar, Ali Askar, Oum Muhammad, Hur, Hussein, we see all these people laying on this ground in this plain of Karbala, gone. And then in the background, as we see all of this, we hear the women in the tent laminating, crying, a cry that we have never heard before. We see that all the men that came with the Imam is no longer alive except Imam Zain al-Badin alayhi salam and his little son, Muhammad Bakr. We see that all this atrocity had took place in one area at one time to one family. And as we picture in this, 
We have to think about someone who played calm and cool and was able to keep everybody in control. Even though she was going through all this trials and tribulations. We think about how they said that it wasn't enough that what you had did to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that you have to do more to him. That you must go and crush his body more than what you have done before. Now you must go towards the tents of the women and rip the hijabs off of their heads and go loot the tents and set things on fire and humiliate everybody there. After all of this, let's think about how we, the problems in which we have and we see we have nothing. This is a night in which is no one has a home that was with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the home is gone. This is the night they are considered homeless in the plains of Karbala. This is the place where they take a little girl, rip the earrings out, burn the clothing of little girls, and have them running throughout the place. This is the place in which they slapped a little girl. This is the place where they gave all disrespect to the Ahlu Bayt. These are the people that didn't care about nothing. This is the same people that took Imam Hussein alayhi salam and grabbed him by the beard and cut his throat. This is the same people at the same place that took the hand of the Imam and put on a spear just to march it up and down the street. But yet, through all this tribulation, we see that there's someone who was calm and cool and did not show. They said that when the wife, the widow, of, the widow of her came to bring food, we see Zainab, how she treated her with utmost respect and give condolences to her. Hearing that she thought about someone else's issues besides hers. Here it is, she only lost one husband, whereas Zainab lost her brothers, her nephews, her nieces, everybody, whoever. But yet she was thinking about someone else. She felt that her loss was far greater than her one herself she had. This is what happened on the night of a shara. This is what happened. Can you imagine that? One of the hardest things or the most scariest things for a person is to be homeless. To have no home. Nowhere to go. That means there is no place for you to lay your head. There is no place for you to just be and sit in comfort. You have nowhere. It's gone. Everything was taken away. This is something that's feared by all of us. None of us want to become homeless. But yet, Akhla Bey is homeless at this moment in time. On this plains of Carabella. There's no home for them no more. It's gone. But yet, we think our trials and tribulations are the most important. Whereas us, we could go home. We have a house. We have a home. But Akhla Bey had to be out in this plains of Carabella with no light, with no fire, with no heat, with no men to protect the women except one that was very ill and could not move. They was all left alone. 
It's for the army of Yazid to come and do what they want to do with these women and children. We have to look at this. Are we in our situation more important than that of Akhla Bait? How can we not have no type of sympathy when we think about what is going on and what had happened to them? If we think about being homeless ourselves, we start to cry. But when it's time to think about Akhla Bait being homeless, there's no tears. Why is that? Why is this? Or if this is the beloved house of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it Hussein considered the son of our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Isn't this, wasn't the son of Fatima sallallahu alayhi and Amir Mukbini, Ali alayhi salam. Isn't he the one that was a part of the cloak? We should realize why our pain is so hurtful and so much and so intense for him. Because remember, the people of the cloak was foul. We had Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, so when he left, we had who? Fatima. Ali, Hassan, and Hussein. But when Fatima left, then we, only, we still had Ali, Hassan, and Hussein, alayhi salam. But when Amir Mukmini Ali left, alayhi salam, we still had Hassan and Hussein. But when Hassan left, we still had Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. But now since Imam Hussein is gone, who do we have? We have no one, so this pain should be even more intense because Akhla Bey, Kisai, the people with the cloak is no longer with us. But how they was taken from us was so, 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 so bad. We have to realize that Akhla Bey is the beloved household of our prophet. And we cannot be like those who think of them as just regular people. They are not regular people that are homeless right now. They are Akhla Bait. They are the ones right now homeless at this moment. If you notice why I said this moment, because we have to think about them still being here. Instead of saying back then, they are still here, right? They're still in our memories, right? They're still with us, right? So we must think of them in the present tense, not in the past tense. We have to realize that the people that do these type of things cannot be considered human beings, let alone Muslims. No. No. For anybody to hurt Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Akhla Bey cannot be lovers of Rasulullah. Cannot believe in Allah's wajalla as their Lord. They have to be somewhere far off the path. This is not the ways of Islam. This is not the ways of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. This is not the ways of Akhla Bayt. This is the way of the shaitan. This is what it is. Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi rajiun. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal as inna linsan ala fi kusi lilladina aminu wa aminu salihati wa tawasabi lhaqi wa tawasabi saf wa akhra dahwana wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salala muhammadin wa aliyya tahirin.